I go and I shake this, you can hear that there's a little bit of slop there. And what that is is going to be the slop or the little bit of room that there is between this bushing and the shaft itself. Before we get started here, if this video helps you out or you like this video, we would just ask you to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as that helps us out as well. Now in this video, I'm gonna be going over what exactly mower spindles are, the differences in different types of mower spindles, and then also the importance of making sure to maintain these mower spindles to add to the life of your mower. First of all, let's answer the main question in case for any of those people out there that don't know, a mower spindle is going to be the actual driving piece of your blades on the deck of your mower. Now, as you can see here, we have two different kinds. They have one that's going to be off of a Z900 series mower, which is gonna be a top grade high-end commercial mower in John Deere. And then we have one here that is off of the S100 series mowers on a 42 inch deck, which is gonna be on the lowest end of the spectrum of John Deere mowers. Now, both of these things here do the exact same job. Both of them are going to have, we have them set as they would be on the deck. So we have the pulley side facing up, meaning that you would have a pulley mounted on the top of the spindles that's going to have the belt wrapped around them that is eventually going to go up to the drive of the mower deck to be able to drive these spindles and turn them that way they can run your blade so as you see here when i'm turning here on the top here where the pulley would be the bottom is spinning there so this is going to be the turning mechanism for that blade. Same here on the Z900. It's a little harder to see here, but if I turn here at the top, you can see that this whole mechanism here at the bottom is spinning as well. So that being said, with these being the moving part of your blade drive, on your mowers. These are going to be very, very, very high wear and also very crucial pieces that we need to make sure that we're maintaining. With that being said, we do have a grease zerk on both of these. Now, they are also in different positions on these two different spindles. And this are, these are just some of the differences that you'll see as you move up in grades of mowers. Also, you'll move up obviously in size and quality and build of spindles as well. But here on the S100 series spindle, we see here that we have a grease zerk right on the side. So this zerk is actually pumping grease straight into the cavity from the outside wall here. And as you would imagine, since we can see this shaft on the outside on both ends, that shaft runs all the way through. So we do have an empty cavity there that we wanna make sure that we're keeping grease in. So for one, to keep this unit cool because it's constantly spinning. Two, to lubricate this shaft that's going through the inside here and keep everything running smooth. And three, we wanna make sure to keep this full of grease to keep any dust and debris that may be able to seep in. Even though these are sealed on both both ends you could have dirt here that happens to seep in and especially moisture moisture is the big one as maybe we're mowing through wet grass or we wash these wash these machines off we may have moisture that gets in here and we don't want that to happen and get on the inside and possibly rust this shaft now here on the z900 series spindle as we can see it's much larger it is heavier but we do still have that grease circuit it's just in a different position it's right here on top so the way that the grease is going to make it into the cavity of this spindle is it's going to go through this grease cert and there will be actually a tiny opening on the shaft so this is going straight into the shaft then there's a tiny opening on the shaft. So as you're pumping this grease in, it's actually going through the shaft and out through that tiny hole to go ahead and fill that cavity and fill the inside of that to keep everything lubricated inside. Now, one thing that I wanna point out that's different here is as you can see here on the smaller spindle, we actually have the shaft that runs out where our pulley would mount on top. But then we have another shaft that runs out here on the bottom where the blade is going to mount directly on. And for this spindle in particular, we have these grooved notches here where that blade is going to sit and actually fit right here at the bottom and then have a nut that goes on right here to hold that blade on. Now, if you notice here on the Z900, we don't have that. We actually have an open hole here. So on some machines, you will have the blade go directly onto the spindle and then a nut and then some you will have the blades sit on and then actually have a bolt and a washer or a bolt and a holder, some type of mechanism here that's going to hold that blade on. So some are going to be bolt in 
and some are gonna be bolt on. So that's also another difference that we can be looking out of. But let's talk about one other main difference here, and it's going to be weight. Now we talked about we are making a drastic jump from the S100 series up to the Z900 series, but just by holding these, I can tell you that we're feeling a little bit like two pounds or maybe a little more over here on this side. And then with the Z900, we're feeling a lot closer to maybe seven or eight pounds. So there's a substantial difference in build in these two housings now, and they're not only here or on these spindles and it's not only going to be here on the housing as both of these are made from cast aluminum as we can see but we have to consider what's on the inside so we have larger bearings obviously here on the z900 we're gonna have a larger shaft we're gonna have a larger you know just larger in general casing that we have for these two spindles so since we're talking about those internal components i'm gonna go ahead and break these open We'll go over what's inside and talk a little bit more about why greasing these spindles is so important. Now that we have both of these spindles broken apart, let's go over some of the similar pieces, but show how they are different. Now, of course, we have talked about the housings here. Once you have the housing broken apart here on the S100 series or that smaller series um, spindle here, which keep in mind, guys, is that across any mower line, whether we're talking John Deere, Kubota, Cub Cadet, Hustler, Husqvarna, any of those mowers, we're gonna have similarities. So take this just as an overall mower spindles explained, but we're using the John Deere models as our example here is that's the parts that we have available to use. So here on this lower end spindle here, as you can see, once we have it cleared out, it is just an open, empty, cast aluminum housing there. We have all of the components out here, which are going to include the shaft. Same thing over here on the Z900 or upper series spindle. Now, one thing that's different is that you'll, as you'll notice, not every component from the inside was taken out. Now, the reason being is, is that on these upper end spindles, we actually are gonna have a grease seal, grease seal and then a bearing back behind that and our inner liner or our inner bushing is still going to be inside there and the reason why i didn't go ahead and take those out is because sometimes taking out those grease seals we damage them and we're having to replace them as normally when we're getting onto the in, in the inside of these housings is whenever we're having issues where maybe we have a bearing that's gone out or a shaft that's gone bad something of that nature so i didn't want to pull those seals out have to replace them for this video but just know that they are in there and you do have those larger bearings because as you could see if we took a bearing from this smaller unit we could go way inside there and have plenty of room because it would it would supposed to seal on the complete outside whereas on this one we have the grease seal here so you can see the significant difference there. Now, like I said, we do have light components here as we do have the shaft assembly. Now these obviously you can tell the difference here in the size, there is a lot of difference here. And like we talked about before on this smaller spindle, we do have the threads on both sides. Whereas here on the larger spindle, we're gonna have threads on the top side. And then on the bottom side, we're gonna have internal threads for a bolt to go inside. Now, since we can't actually get to the bearings on this larger one, I just wanna point out here that on the smaller, the smaller spindle, we do have sealed bearings on both sides. Now, we have a lot of comments on this specific topic. Now, Brent, if my, if my S100 series tractor has sealed bearings on both sides, what's the point of me greasing that? So let me just go over this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna move away from the bigger spindle here and go back to our S100 series spindle or our smaller spindle. Now, inside, of course, we do have the shaft. Then on this shaft, we would have one bearing here. We would have our sleeve, and then we would also have another bearing on top just like that. Now, if I go and I shake this, you can hear that there's a little bit of slop there. And what that is is going to be the slop or the little bit of room that there is between this bushing and the shaft itself. Now, this bushing is meant to be a protectant and to help keep those bearings seated to where they're supposed to be, but also it's a protectant for the shaft on the inner side to help keep those contaminants away from the actual internal shaft, hoping to lessen the chance of there being damage to that shaft. So keeping grease in this unit is very, very important to that way. For one, we keep those contaminants out. And also you have to keep in mind that this internal shaft is spinning and this bushing may not be. So we wanna make sure that it has lubrication also to keep everything nice and lubricated where we don't get too hot 
get things too warm and actually end up ruining things. Because a lot of the times what happens here is with these sealed bearings, it's not the bearings that go bad. What will go bad is actually the housing. And the reason for that being is if we don't keep this grease and keep this lubricated and keep the inside of this unit full, this little bit of slop here, which seems like not much at all, this little bit of wiggle here, when you're thinking about this spinning at multiple, multiple RPMs, very, very high speeds, that's gonna give that shaft just enough wiggle to move everything and possibly, you know, round out the insides of this housing and cause this housing to go bad. So the sealed bearings on the spindle are not a bad thing. We just have to make sure that we're maintaining them like we're supposed to, to keep things nice and snug and fit and to keep contaminants out and to keep any vibration and wiggle out of that housing. All right, now moving back over here to our larger, more commercial spindle. As you can see, like we said, we have that larger shaft. Now, a couple of things also that we're going to have are these spacers here. As we can see, one is splined and one is not. So we would know that this spline spacer would go onto this shaft. And now why we have those spacers is, is because you can see this recessed area from where the grease seal is to the bearing and bushing. Same thing here on this side, we have a little bit of recessed in where we do need those bushings to go in just to keep everything again, nice and snug and tight to where we don't have any wiggle in this shaft to cause any damage to this housing. So if we were going to put this back together, we would go on with our bottom bushing here, or we would put this into the unit here, just like that on the bottom. And then we would go in with our shaft, just like so. Then we would go on top with our top bushing, line up those splines, hard to do here with greasy fingers. We'd go on with this top bushing, just like so. Then we would go on with our cover and then on with our mounting piece. Now this mounting piece here is going to be actually for the pulley that's going to be on top of this. Now, as you saw before on over here on the smaller side, that the pulley is actually gonna screw down onto the shaft of this spindle. Now on this one, the pulley is actually going to mount to this plate. So this is a very hard, thick metal plate here for that to go onto. And then we would have our nut that goes on top here to hold everything together. And then lastly, we'd have our grease zerk here that would screw in right into the top of this spindle housing. Now, just to recap and with all of that being said, just keep in mind that there is multiple levels here of these spindles. They're all going to do the same job. They all need the same care. They all need that greasing to make sure and keep everything lubricated, keep those contaminants out and make these spindles last as long as you can. Because the better off you, the better you do about maintaining these, the longer they will last and the better your mower will perform all throughout the season and over the years. So guys, my main thing that I want you to get out of this is to see that there are different levels of these, see that it is important that we're greasing these spindles, whether they have sealed bearings, non-sealed bearings, whatever that may be, because that grease is not just for those bearings. Now, in some cases in the, in the, larger, in the larger spindles here, we do have those open-ended bearings where that grease does need to get in and make sure it's lubricating those too. But the main thing here in these spindles, no matter what size you're in, is keeping that center cavity greased to making sure that we're keeping those contaminants out and making sure that we don't get those vibrations and happen to ruin these housings. So guys, I hope this video helped you out. And if it did, we just ask that you hit that like button and subscribe to the channel as that helps us out as well. And also guys, if you have any other questions or comments, make sure to leave those down in the comments section below so I can be sure to get back with you. And also guys, while you're down there in the comments section, make sure to scroll up just a little bit into that description tab. Click on that link to 247parts.com where you can go to get all of your John Deere parts needs whether it be for your lawnmowers, your tractors, your gators, your compact construction equipment, whatever those things may be, make sure to check that out. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Hey, guys, make sure to check out this cool video and this one. Buy your parts right up here and subscribe right here.